I have a post surgery update for you. But first I want to say thank you for your thoughts, well wishes and prayers. Please keep them coming. We believe in prayer. My husband is doing great. His incision looks healthy. He's still struggling with his voice. And we have an appointment on Tuesday morning. So we should be able to find out if that's to be expected. And I should be able to share more about what he's been going through shortly. For my post-surgery update, I want to give you sort of a timeline of what I went through, primarily to let you know how I'm doing, but also to share my experience for anyone who may be going through the same thing or is about to go through the same thing. If you stumbled onto this video and you haven't seen the previous videos, there'll be a uh, links in the video description to those previous videos giving you a little background on my story and what I've been through up to this point in time. So two weeks ago, Monday, I had my surgery date. We went in first thing in the morning, which is good because the night before I had I had to start the colon cleanse not pretty oh my gosh it was well actually it wasn't too bad at first so I had to take four Ducalax and let me just apologize for TMI I'll, I'll try to keep it high high level <laughs> to spare you the details so I had four Ducalax at two in the afternoon. And then an hour later, I took, or I drank this liquid. I don't remember something citrate. Hold on, I got it. Okay, so here it is magnesium citrate this you got to choke it down it's awful I thought maybe it being cherry flavor it wouldn't be so bad but oh my gosh after drinking that I was nauseous for probably six hours and I tried really hard to keep it down because I wanted it to work and clean me out and uh, I was able to do that, thankfully. And at first, let's see, I think maybe at around, let's say, 5 o'clock or so, maybe 6, that's when it all started working. And I'm sure you know what I mean when I say working. And between 6 and midnight, it was awful. And if you've ever had a colonoscopy and had to do any colon cleanse, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's, it's not a pleasant experience, but you get through it. So I was actually feeling a bit of the effects of all this between the Ducalax and this magnesium citrate. I was feeling the effects of it until I actually got on the, the table in the operating room and I had to apologize if I had any problems but thankfully I didn't have any problems so I kind of jumped ahead a little bit so I got checked in and um, undressed and I put on that lovely gown um, and then they gave me an IV I think they gave it to me in my in, in on the top of my hand which is painful, but it's better than the crook of the arm because anytime you bend your arm, the, the equipment beeps. So I actually prefer it on my forearm or the, the, the top of my hand, but I still have bruises. I don't know if you can see that, but I still have bruises and it's, it's actually painful to the touch. And um, I have bruises elsewhere on my arms and I'll share about that in a minute. So they gave me the IV and and um, 
fluids, and then also some anxiety medication, which I'm very grateful for because anytime I go under, I have terrible thoughts of not waking up. And I understand that that is normal. A lot of people feel that way. Thankfully, I did wake up. So I remember the ride to the operating room and I remember being concerned about transferring from one table to the next, but they had a couple people there and they just basically grabbed the sheet and pulled me over and I got on there just fine. But I, I was concerned about how I was gonna manage that, especially with my tummy trouble. I thought, you know, I might have some kind of an accident, but I got onto the table just fine. So after I got on the table, they gave me the medication to make me go to sleep. And thankfully I didn't have any memory of anything until I, I woke up in the recovery room. And I wanna show you the incisions. So this is just a diagram. And if you are at all bothered by this kind of thing, I just wanna give you a few seconds to either speed the video up or look away for a couple minutes while I share about the incisions, then um, that's great. But I wanna also explain what my expectations were. So I was supposed to, my doctor said that they were gonna do robotic surgery, which they did. And I remember when I woke up, they said the surgery went well and then there's a caveat, which I'll go into in a minute. So they said that they hope to just have the incisions for the robotic instruments, but they actually had to open me up a little bit. And that's what I wanted to show you. And I think this is probably why I'm still in pain. And uh, it's, it's hard anytime I use my core, like right now, this is not comfortable for me. I think it's gonna take a little more time um, for me to be able to sit at a desk, for example, or get up and down, bending, things like that. I'm still having quite a bit of pain. Uh, so let me just show you now. Here's a diagram of the incisions for robotic surgery. And I have the incisions with the red line. So the green circles, there's a one inch incision that's horizontal. And then the blue circle on the right is another one inch horizontal incision. And then the one in the middle is a vertical incision. I don't have an incision where you see the number 10. So I have five one inch incisions across my abdomen, just above my belly button. And they're looking fine. They don't hurt. Um, I, I still have, I think it's called Dermabond. Instead of stitches or staples, they use Dermabond, if that's the right name. And it the it's still there, but it's kind of peeling up on the edges and you're just supposed to let water run over them and not scrub or anything like that. So I'll just let those come off naturally. So that's still there. And then the line that you see under the belly button, which you can barely see, the belly button I think is, let's see, probably like just around where the circle is for 12, but you see the red line just at the hip level, this is about a three or four inch incision and that they prepared me for. They said that if they wouldn't be able to remove the mass through one of the incisions, I guess with the robotic surgery, I'm not sure, uh, then they would create another incision to remove the mass. And I think that's what this is. but. Hopefully I'll get clarification of why I have this additional incision. And that incision is also looking fine. That one is a little more painful and I would expect that because it's bigger. Um, and so that also has the Dermabond. So I didn't have to get any staples or 
any sutures. It's all using the Dermabond, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. The pain that I feel is deep inside. It's not the incisions. And I was doing my own research on it, namely YouTube videos. Well, really just one video. I typed or I did a search for post oophorectomy abdominal pain. And I found a video from a pelvic floor physical therapy company. And they said that that pain that you feel is scar tissue. And what happens is anytime you get incisions, your body develops scar tissue to heal. And the scar tissue is like webbing and it can adhere to other organs and structures in your body and that's where the pain comes from so i'm thinking that's what i'm experiencing and it's to be expected the research that i did and what my doctor prepared me for was two to six weeks of recovery time which includes a bit of pain so they said that it would be two weeks if they just did the robotic incisions and then if they had to open me up it would be more like four to six weeks, which I think is probably what I'm going to experience. And I'm thinking that just based on the level of pain I'm at now compared to last week, I might need one more week of not working at the computer to feel comfortable long for, you know, my regular work day, for example. So we'll see. So I'm thinking I might need next week as well to recuperate. I'll know more because I have a doctor appointment on Tuesday at 11.15 uh, to check up on my incisions probably and then also go over the pathology results, which we don't have yet. So we still don't know what the mass is made up of and hopefully we'll find out on Tuesday. Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to find out on Tuesday. So the, another thing that happened while I was under general anesthesia is that I had a heart incident and they admitted me because of that. And they did some blood work and said that the blood work indicated that I had a mar mild heart attack. So they did a heart catheter. Uh, let's see, wait a minute. No, first they did a, a heart ultrasound. Then they did a heart catheter. And I was in like a twilight sleep and they went through my arm and they put a catheter to my heart to check on my my arteries to see if there were any blockages and they said if they found any blockages they would put in stents and the good news is my heart is fine and there were no blockages so I didn't have to have any stents put in and the cardiologist said that it was just a incident in reaction to the surgery I will have a follow-up appointment with the cardiologist later and they may do more tests, I don't know. But my heart was fine before I went into surgery. I had an EKG and a chest x-ray and my heart was fine. And then of course this happened, but they think it was just due to uh, my body's reaction to the surgery. I forgot to tell you what happened with my IVs. So I started with the one in my hand and it got clogged. And let me tell you, it is extremely painful. When they did the flushing, it burned, but when they tried to put the medication in, I couldn't take it and they had to stop. So they removed that and then they put in another IV on my arm and that one ended up getting clogged as well. And so then they had to put another IV in my other arm so I had to go through that several times and it was excruciating. Since my heart was fine, they released me. 
that second day and they sent me home with oxycodone and 800 milligrams of ibuprofen and the instructions were from the hospital were to take one oxycontin per day so i just took it in the morning and then the ibuprofen was one every eight hours so i struggled through that first day and was a bit surprised that i would have so much pain with so little medication so i called my doctor and they said that was it those were incorrect instructions so they changed my instructions and had me take the oxycodone every four hours and then in between take an ibuprofen so for the first week that's what i did and i i got through the first week just fine again anytime i used my core it was very painful so i just parked myself on the couch and relaxed and um, took a nap on the couch each day and took the medication as prescribed by my doctor. But I did also walk, and I forgot to mention that I did get up and walk the day of the surgery. They want you up and walking right away. And that's basically, of course, to make sure you don't get deep vein thrombosis, DVTs, and then also to keep your system circulating, not only circulation with your blood, but also with your bowels. And so they want you to do that also because pain medication can cause constipation. So I was up and walking the day of, and I walked three times a day, even to this point, and will going forward as well, of course. Um, so thankfully I didn't have any sort of complications or symptoms thereafter of um, any bowel problems or anything like that. I also have been taking a colace every day and that was pres not prescribed but it's over the counter so my doctor recommended that I take a colace every day and I'm still doing that. So everything's been fine in that regard. Uh, let's see. So. Once I was able to take the pain medication more often, getting through the day was much more bearable. And I, of course, ran out of my prescription because I was given 15, which sh should have given me two weeks of pain medication if I took one a day. But of course, I stopped doing that. I was taking one every four hours the first week. Monday morning, I called my doctor to get a refill and was able to get it later that day, thankfully. And so I was taking one oxycodone in the morning and then one at around seven. So I was taking two a day until Wednesday and then one a day starting Wednesday and then of course yesterday and today. So I'm just taking one oxycodone in the morning because I go all night with nothing and it's pretty painful first thing in the morning. So that kind of just gets me through the pain first thing, and then I walk and I'm feeling better, and it kind of tapers off, but by then I will have gotten at least two um, times where I'm walking outside for a little bit of exercise, and then I'm able to relax on the couch until later in the evening when I also walk before we turn in for bed. So that is where I'm at right now. Um, I'm doing well overall, except anytime I have to use my core, there's still significant pain. And when I say significant, I'd say on a scale of one to 10, let's say, maybe a seven when I have to use my core. But once I'm still and relaxed, then I, I'd say it's more like a two. So the pain is always there, but it subsides once I stop using my core. Like every time I move, there's pain. So I think it's gonna take a little bit longer to get better, but I am improving. Tuesday, is going to be a big day that 
will be the day where she looks over my incisions and then probably will also go over the results of the pathology. So I will do another update after we hear about the pathology. So sometime next week, I'll do another update video. Thank you again so much for thinking of me and for your encouragement and support. I see all the comments on Facebook and in my YouTube videos and I've been hearting everything just so you know that I see that you are wishing me well and I really do appreciate it so very much. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.